Hey guys, one of the best questions people are asking today is, how much time should I spend on drills and how much time should I spend on games? This is great because you wanna use your time well. Time management is important. Regardless if you have four hours a week or 30 hours a week to spend on table tennis, this is a great question. So there's actually hundreds of details that kind of give you the answer to this. But today, instead of giving you hundreds of details, I'm gonna kind of break it down into 12 categories that you might wanna to consider today. Category number one is the goals. You've heard the expression, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So spend some time today kind of writing out your goals. What is your goal on table tennis? Is it to win a national title? Is it to lose 10 pounds? Is it to meet new people in a social environment? What's really your goal? So once you have the goal, then it's easier to start mapping out the roadmap. Next is the proximity to the goal. Let's say, for example, this goal is not for you. Maybe it's for your seven-year-old son, and you would like him to be an elite player within 12 years. Okay, we're really at a long-term goal then. Or maybe, um, let's say, for example, you've been playing for 10 years, and your goal is to win the under 2,000 at the state championship next month. Okay, so that's really a short-term goal. So when you're considering some factors, think about how close or how far are we away from that ultimate goal. Next is the exact timing within the season. Usually seasons are six month seasons that you think in terms of structuring your game for six months. So the amount of time that you spend on drills versus games may vary from the beginning of the season closer to the end of the season. Of course, in the beginning of the season, you're gonna be working on more foundational things. As you get closer to your peak event, everything needs to become more game-like, okay? Uh, the next is the level of competition not only the level of your practice partners, but also the level of people that you're gonna be playing matches with. Whether it be pickup matches or club matches or league matches or tournament matches, these are some things that you've gotta take into consideration. The next is the variety of competition and also the variety of practice partners. Are your practice partners able to simulate different things to give you variety? And when you do play matches against different people, how many different people do you have to play against? Do you have one person or two people? Do you have 20 people? This plays a part in it as well. The next one is actually, I think, the most critical. It's called the structure of your game. At what point are you developing new things in your game? That's what some people ask me is, how long does it take to develop this new thing into my game? There's a lot of different things that you could change in your game. For example, let's say grip. Maybe you've been holding the racket like this for a long time and you wanna hold the correct grip for shake hands grip. If you change and you, then you play matches on the first day, it's probably gonna feel really weird and you're gonna probably lose a lot of matches and maybe feel uncomfortable with it. So maybe to implement a new grip, maybe you should practice with your power pong robot for a few, a few weeks or even a few months. Maybe you should do drills and then try some games, okay? So like a grip shift would be something that would be more of like a major change, like a major grip change. Something maybe a little bit minor would be learning how to place the ball a little bit better. So if you have a lesson and you're working on something simple, a small detail like ball placement, for sure you should play games. So a lot of it has to do with the structure of how you play and how much you're implementing new things into your game. The more concrete your game is, the more solid your game is, and the closer you are to your ultimate goal, the more you should play games. The more you're working on foundational things, putting tools in your toolboxes, learning how to backhand block and forehand loop, learning how to serve short, learning how to read spin, the more you should be focusing on drills, not too much on games, okay? So drills and games are both a part of the process, but initially you've gotta have the tools. It would be kind of funny just to think, I'm gonna go out there and just play games, but you not have any tools. So the first thing is developing the tools, and then the next thing is implementing those tools, okay? The next is the distance from the academy or the distance from the club. So not only drills versus games, but how often should I be playing? Some of the people that come here for the, to the academy, they're driving from two hours or three hours or four hours away. So if they come here, they're gonna come for a longer duration. If they're closer, let's say they're one minute away, maybe they're gonna be able to come every day. So that's another factor you have to consider is distance. Next thing is confidence of the player. Some players, they play with a lot of confidence and when they play matches, they feel like they're learning new things and they feel like it's helping to boost their confidence. Other people, especially in certain stages, you know, they lose confidence easily. They're like, oh, if I lose another match, I'm gonna quit. So I just need to focus on practice. So a lot of it has to do with 
think to yourself as a player, do match play, do the, the, the matches, do they help you become more confident or less confident? Okay. Next one is the outcome of match play. So in the past, when you personally, when you personally have played more matches, has this helped improve your progress or did you feel like it hindered your progress from match play in previous years? The next is outcome of match play recently. Within the last week or within the last month or three months, when you've played more matches, has it improved your game or do you feel like it takes your game down a notch? It kind of goes back to this. <clears throat> a lot of times as your game becomes better structured and you've got a lot of tools, naturally more match play is gonna help you because more matches help you play better in matches. If you're developing something new, let's say you haven't learned how to backhand loop and you're going out there missing 95% of your backhand loops, then playing more matches is probably not the best thing right now. The uh, point number 11 is adjustments, the best plan. So no matter what your plan is as far as the percentage, maybe you wanna do drills 60% and matches 40%, the best plan is an adjustable plan. So don't get through the entire season and then be like, oh man, I wish I would have done this different and this different and this different. What you really need to be able to do is have an adjustable plan. Even if you plan to do, let's say, <clears throat> six hours of drills and three hours of games every week, you're gonna have to be a little bit flexible on that. If more match play is doing better, then shift more toward that. If more match play is leading to more discouragement and you feel like some things are breaking down, then shift to more drills. And the last thing kind of rooting back to my first point is time management. The reason that people are asking this question is they want to be good at time management. So I have to remind you that no matter if it's drills or games, no matter if it's power pong robot training, serve practice, fitness, video analysis, you got to use time management. So just don't think solely about the hours. Also think about the quality that you're putting into those hours. Thanks for watching, and I really appreciate all of you that have asked me this question. I've been asked this question over 100 times. If you have any more questions, feel free to send me an email, tt at samsonnavina.com. Also, check out my website. I have 600 free articles and 700 free videos available on my website, samsonnavina.com.